This is my Dremel Model 370 that I bought somewhere, I think in the early 1980s, for around $50. And other than having to clean this uh, variable speed switch once a long time ago, it's been very reliable. And uh, as you can see, it came with all this other stuff. Now, something I found online, which was uh, oh considerably cheaper at around $5, is this motorized tool. I thought we'd kind of unpack it, take a look and see what's going on. It certainly has some nice pictures and it looks like they have different models. Um, yeah, but I, I think I paid five or six dollars for this. Um, and as you can see, it's got a lot of bits, different bits, collets, whatever that came with it. Um, power supply. Now the other one's 110 volts, um, direct AC, and this one is, well, <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it has uh, variable speed right there, and um, it feels okay, a little bit cheap, but has the uh, power thingy there. I'm not sure what that knurled knob is. Oh, that's how you take it apart. Has the uh, brake, so you can uh, lock the shaft. And I don't really feel that right there. Um, yeah, so why don't we do some uh, comparisons, both uh, just, you know, static and uh, maybe some dynamic, and then uh, take it apart and see what's going on inside. The first thing we can see is the size difference. Um, yeah, uh, usually a bigger motor has more power, torque, all that good stuff. Uh, let's see. This one says it is 9, 0.9 amps high speed, 0.75 amps low speed. So uh, at 115 volts, so that's roughly 100 watts. This one isn't marked anywhere. I uh, looked on the back side, don't read Chinese, but it looks more like a warning than anything. And so we have to go off the power supply and the power supply says uh, 12 volts, one amp. So the maximum this thing can do, assuming it's everything's 100% efficiency would be 12 watts. So we're looking at uh, one tenth of the power. Um, the size is nice. One of the things about my Dremel is it's kind of big and after you hold it, you know, in your hand for a while, it's kind of, uh, it makes your hand a little crampy. So this one might uh, might be nice if, uh, uh, you know, if it'll spin up and uh, produce enough power to actually do anything. Okay, so then let's uh, look at some of the tools that came with it. Here's the bag of stuff that came with it. Now, I know that not all of these are original. I can't remember which ones were the originals and which ones weren't. I know that the uh, cutting wheel was, the sander was, a few of these uh, grinding wheels were and uh, yeah, a couple of various, uh, some of the other suburbs and whatever. Uh, but yeah, and then it has three collet chucks. So this one has, yeah, let me pour it out my hand because I ain't gonna feel, get them out of the bag one at a time. Okay, so this one has, looks like four collet chucks. They're brass, they're kind of thin. Um, yeah, comparison, can we see that? Yeah, the, uh, yeah, they're, yeah, just a little bit thinner. I wouldn't say it's too terribly different. Um, grinding wheel. Now, I know that one of these came with the original Dremel, so comparable to, yeah, maybe that one. Uh, buffing wheel. Yes, I did get one of those. I remember that. This which is roughly equivalent to that back there. Uh, this is the unused version of it. A drill bit, which is a little smaller than that one, but yes, roughly the same. Uh, sanding wheel. Um, I don't see one of those among here. I don't think that came with it. A uh, small grinding wheel, probably like that one back there. Another buffer. Another sander, another sander, 
right there and get my fingers out of the way. Those are tiny. And then the, uh, the uh, I can't think of the word, uh, thing that you put the sanding wheels on. They go in there and then you tighten it down and the little rubber thing expands and holds it on. Oh, some very tiny drill bits. Wow, very tiny. Okay, one, a little bit bigger one. There, yet again bigger. And let's see. Yep, yet again bigger. So there's what, five drill bits so far. Another grinding stone. And I know that one of these came with the original set. It's similar to that one. This one's a little finer, that one's a little coarser. Never been sure what this thing does, but <laughs> it looks like a screw on the end of a shaft. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. Uh, the thing that holds the uh, the cutting wheel, which is, uh, yeah, very useful. And a little saw, saw wheel, but it doesn't feel very substantial. I'm not sure how that'll hold up. Actually, and then I missed a collet. So, uh, five collet chucks for this. Okay, so very good assortment of tools. Uh, not sure the quality of them, but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll give that a try. Got her plugged in and let's turn it on. Okay, that's low speed. Stalls out pretty easily. Yeah, this is a test not done with a Dremel. Um, crank up the speed slowly. Whoa, didn't move it very far. Kind of jumps ahead, still stalls. Whoa! It kind of goes from nothing to everything. So let's see, I'm moving the wheel maybe an eighth of a turn. And yeah, it kind of goes from, yeah, it takes it maybe a little over an eighth of a turn to go from nearly, you know, lowest power to highest power. And the last half of the wheel doesn't do anything. Okay, full power. Yeah, not too bad. I can stall it, but uh, this uh, BEF is not, yeah, not too bad. Okay, let's uh, compare this uh, speed range to the Dremel. And the Dremel 370. We'll start her up here. Yeah, I'm not gonna stall that easily with my fingers out, chewing something off. Okay, let's try the speed ranges. There's one, you can hear it go up a little. Consistently going up, consistently going up. There's three, yeah, continually going up. Four, five, six. Actually, that's the end. Looks like my knob is off, but that's maxed out. So just between the last two marks, there's not a lot of change. Considerably noisier. To be totally honest, I started out with kind of a biased, poor opinion of this thing. Uh, the other day I uh, needed to clean out the holes in this little aerator for a faucet. And I got out my Dremel and I thought, you know, no, this is a perfect chance to, uh, to try this thing. And I got out, can you see that? One of my smallest drill bits. And I was just going to re-drill all these holes. And, uh, you know, it worked really well. The nice thing is it's easy to grip. It's small so I can look around it. I mean, it doesn't get in the way. Like, you know, with the bigger one, it will uh, get right there in your face. I mean, you can see it's a lot bigger. And as you're doing fine stuff, kind of have to look around it or you end up tipping it away. So I found this to be a really a good tool for that job. So yeah, okay, I, that, was, uh, that was one thing. Uh, so let's try it for some other stuff. I got a piece of wood. This is kind of a medium wood. It's not hard wood. It's not a soft wood like balsa. But I got my fine drill bit in there again. And let's see how it does.
Yeah, it slows down a bit. It's running full power, but you know, the, would the Dremel do it faster? Maybe a touch faster, but. And yeah, that's another problem is I found that the collet comes loose on it uh, as much as I crank it down. So that was a good demo. Wasn't planning on that demo right at that moment, but yeah, that's uh, one of the things I found is the collet. I have to really crank it to keep it from, uh, from uh, coming loose with the finer tools. Here's the brass collet that came with it. I've replaced it with my steel collet for my Dremel. See if that makes a difference. Of course, it won't make a difference in drill speed, but. I have a feeling it's not going to come as come loose as quickly. Okay, so that's one improvement that makes this a, a lot more workable is just getting rid of the brass collets. I thought the brass collets would be good because, you know, brass is softer, would grip better. But no, uh, it's not true. Let's try another test of sanding. Uh, this is a pretty coarse sanding grit. Crank it up full power, sand block of wood as before. You know, I'm going to give that an okay. If I was working with a uh, lighter wood like balsa wood or pine, maybe doing model work. Uh, yeah, if I were working on model airplanes or boats or something. I would say that's, that's an acceptable performance and again, a much lighter weight tool. Uh, let's compare that against the Dremel and see uh, how much faster it will work. So I'm going to use the same sanding wheel as the other one and uh, from the BEF. And one thing I noticed is that when I was putting this on and I was tightening it down, the sanding wheel is such that the rotation of the tool actually loosens the screw on the end that holds the sander in place. So that's not good. Okay, so let's crank this up and see what it's going to do for us. Um, I guess I should use full speed since that's what I did on the other one. Not going to be a fair test, I don't think. Okay. I think that proves the point. The Dremel will definitely chew through there a lot faster. Uh, it's just got a lot more power. But again, if you're working on finer things like a, a balsa model or something, um, yeah, the other tool would be uh, has the advantage of uh, being cheaper, lighter, easier to see around. The Dremel certainly has more uh, horsepower. Let's try this saw tool. I'll be honest, it kind of scares me when I've got my safety shield on and all that so uh yeah it's just a saw blade had to make sure it was oriented in the right direction start it up i have a feeling it's going to stall pretty easily but again this thing has surprised me so yeah um again balsa wood light plastic you know thin plastic It'd probably do okay but um, it's uh, the tool itself in this case the, the cutting blade is not a quality thing it's not like uh, some of the Dremel stuff I have I promised a tear down so a tear down it shall be I'm also curious to see what's going on inside here that ring is just oh, I thought it was screwed on it's just kind of a, a pop-on fit 
And then there's this after I move the chuck off of here. So a little bit like a, a Dremel in its disassembly. Gotta hold the brake. Okay. Screw that off of there, put it off to the side. Flip this over. I got a piece of sticky stuff down there to help me hold it so it doesn't roll away. Get it back on there. Okay, there we go. Got four screws. Yeah, my hand's always in the way. Okay. Hmm. It almost looks like it was made to have a, uh, a battery in the handle also, but okay. Um, hmm. Should just, there we go. Tight fit. And there we have the two halves. So as I suspected, the battery, or the battery, the uh, motor is not very robust. It's pretty much just your standard off-the-shelf uh, little DC motor. The speed controller, yeah, that is uh, basically just a uh, LM, I can't read it. LM337 or 317, I can't quite make it out. So it's just a uh, voltage regulator uh, IC. And yeah, so they're controlling the voltage to the motor. And so yeah, power comes in here, goes through the uh, voltage controller and directly into the motor. And then from the motor, it goes out here to the uh, shaft where the uh, Call it. It's kind of interesting that they they drill a hole in there, uh, but oh wait, no, I know why that hole is there. It's because of that. They already have their own device, but it doesn't seem like when I go to use this that the pin wants to wants to go in there. And I see they're not. Can, I don't know if you can see that they're not well aligned, so the pin is not going into the hole. This. Yeah, let me get do a little better job of that. This hole would need to be drilled like right up here. Uh, or this has been pressed on too far or something um, to, uh, to keep it from fully engaging. Keep the pin on this side from fully engaging in the hole. Also, they have a little fan right there, which is interesting. Uh, that little black thing right there. That is a fan it, it, uh, to kind of stir the... Uh, stir the air and there's vent holes if you can see right there and on the other side here here's something i almost missed they actually have the uh, shaft supported by a nice uh, little ball bearing right there okay so yeah it's not uh it's not robust like the dremel but again it uh, seems to have uh, enough power to do some uh, lightweight jobs if I could buy only one tool, had only space for one tool, it would definitely be the Dremel. And that assumes that I have the money to, to buy one. Uh, if I could uh, work only on very light stuff, you know, models, balsa wood, light plastics, and so on, this is not a bad tool. And in fact, for five bucks, you can afford to have two or three or four of these sitting around with uh, different tools in them. Uh, the uh, different uh, you know, grinders, cutters, and whatever, ready to go and just trade them off without having to unchuck and, and rechuck a, a new uh, bit every time you uh, want to change. So I can see where this would uh, have some definite uh, uses around the, around the uh, workshop. And yeah, the, the drawback is it doesn't develop the power of the Dremel. Sure, the Dremel's going to win when it comes to just raw power. The, the Dremel wins every time. 
Uh, when it comes though to lightweight finesse and being able to see around the tool, uh, you can see that the profiles are very different. This one is much easier to see the work and it's much easier to get into to smaller spaces, obviously. Uh, it doesn't fatigue the hand as much. So yeah, I was, uh, I was willing to, uh, uh, I was ready to uh, give a, a kind of a, a scathing rebuke on a piece of junk. But frankly, I can see where this uh, would have some, some definite merit, especially if you replace those brass collet chucks with the steel ones. And I think that's probably would be the biggest improvement on it. And outside of that, yeah, I mean, uh, if you've got the space and you've got the uh, right applications, I think this would be a pretty good tool. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful and interesting in your home DIY works.